A new security innovation for Windows 10 that you need to be aware of is Device Guard. This is virtualization-based security. It is aimed at business users and is available only in Windows 10 Enterprise and Windows 10 Education. But for anyone technical and interested in strong security for Windows 10, then Device Guard should be used as it is the next generation in operating system security for Microsoft. So let me break down how it works. To help protect against malware, hackers and zero day vulnerabilities, threats, etc. When an app is executed or a process is run, Windows makes a determination on whether that app, that process is trustworthy and notifies the user if it is not. To do this, it utilizes both hardware and software to lock down the device. And in order to do this, it has a few steps. So first, applications must have a valid digital signature to execute. This can be from a specific software vendor, from Microsoft or the Windows Store. So this is the first little hurdle of protection as part of Device Guard. Unfortunately, just because something is digitally signed or from the Windows Store doesn't mean it is free of malware. A digital signature only verifies that the developer's private key signed it. The developer could be a bad guy or a bad guy could have changed the code without the developer knowing when he got hold of the private key. Or, as has been seen in the wild, like in the example of Xcode, hackers had made changes to Xcode, the development environment, so the development environment was adding malicious code to an application and then the application was signed. So, digital signatures, not perfect. The store could be compromised as well. Both Apple and Google have had rogue apps in their stores. But most current malware and attack tools are not currently signed. So this is a genuine hurdle to have to overcome. But of course, Device Guard takes it much further than just digital signatures because it adds extra options. You can sign whichever software you choose that you know and trust. You can have a list of your own signed trusted apps without needing to make any changes to the code. So you can be the master of what you trust. Microsoft calls this configurable code integrity. Any alterations to these applications would be noticed by Device Guard and wouldn't allow them to run. This is a nice little feature, this configurable code integrity. I like it. But what makes Device Guard really special is that it uses hardware technology and virtualization to isolate decision making functions from the rest of the operating system. This helps provide protection from attackers and malware that have managed to even gain admin privileges. And they refer to this as virtualization based security or VBS. And this makes up a large part of what the device guard security offering is really. The type one hypervisor technology that is used to run virtual machines in Microsoft Hyper-V is used to isolate core Windows services into a virtualization based protected container. These hardware protected containers are guarded by the IOMMU and other mechanisms in the CPU. The IOMMU attempts to block malware from accessing the lowest levels of the operating system. It controls what hardware can access the system memory and it tries to prevent malicious drivers and devices from attacking the OS and apps. Device Guard isolates Windows services that verify whether drivers and kernel level code are legitimate in a virtual container. Even if malware infects the machine, it cannot in theory access that container to bypass the checks and execute a malicious payload. This hypervisor container or approach or VBS as they call it, is using the security principle of isolation and compartmentalization, which is so important and I have tried to convince you of its merits throughout this course. Microsoft seems to be on board with this idea now too. VPS, virtualization based security and technology like it for me is the next developmental stage for operating system security. 
Device Guard using Windows 10 shares this isolation and compartmentalization principled approach with the Cube's operating system as an example, which is specifically designed as a security operating system or secure operating system, which of course we discussed at length early on in the course. Device Guard is more than a whitelisting mechanism because it handles whitelisting through virtualization, making it more effective. This means that malware and hackers with admin rights cannot then, in theory, alter the policy checks like you can with current whitelisting or exploit prevention tools like Emmet. Once you have admin rights with those, you can start fiddling with them. Device Guard has that advantage over signature, behavioral, and heuristic-based antivirus and application control technologies like AppLocker and others, which are subject to tampering by an administrator or malware or an attacker who has administrative access or system-level access. Device Guard will be used in combination with signature and behavioral and heuristic-based antivirus and endpoint protection and application control technologies to help block executable and script-based malware, while AV will continue to cover areas that Device Guard just doesn't cover, such as just-in-time-based apps like Java and macros within Documents. Using hardware-based virtualization to extend whitelisting is, I believe, the right move for operating systems. This isolation removes the vulnerability of services from both the user and kernel mode and acts as a barrier from current malware and threats. It will be interesting to see how Device Guard will be attacked and bypassed in the future. Currently, it seems solid by today's standards in terms of its theory, but it is only in theory a formidable defense against current malware and zero-day exploits. Hardware requirements. The hardware requirements for Device Guard are restrictive. To enable Device Guard, your device will need the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI firmware, Secure Boot, a trusted platform module, the TPM chip, and support for 64-bit virtualization. To use the hypervisor, base protections, which you really want to do. You'll need a processor with virtualization extensions. That means Intel VTX and AMD V and SLAT SLAT, which is the second level address translation support. Ideally, a processor that has IO MMU, such as Intel VTD and AMD IOV. So only enterprise or business hardware, not consumer laptops, currently support this type of hardware. Microsoft says the following computer makers that you can see here have already signed on to support Device Guard, Acer, Fujitsu, HP, Lenovo, etc. But lighter laptops are unlikely to support these sort of hardware requirements, certainly in the short term, but maybe in the long term. If you want to find out whether the devices that you have can support Device Guard, then download this here, Device Guard and Credential Guard Hardware Readiness Tool, which is a PowerShell script which you just run and it'll let you know what features you can support. Device Guard goes beyond the old app locker feature, which could be accessed by attackers with administrative privileges, as I've already said. Only an updated policy signed by a trusted signer can change the device guard app control policy that has been set on the device. Although AppLocker is not considered a new device guard feature, it complements device guard functionality when enforced code integrity cannot be fully implemented or its functionality does not cover every desired scenario. There are many scenarios in which code integrity policies would be used alongside AppLocker rules. As a best practice, you should enforce code integrity policies at the most restrictive level possible, and then you can use AppLocker to fine-tune the restrictions to an even lower level. One example in which device guard functionality needs AppLocker supplementation is when you would like to limit universal applications. Universal applications 
have already been validated by Microsoft to be trustworthy to run. But you may not want those applications to be capable of running. You can accomplish this enforcement by also using an app locker rule. If you're not concerned about the serious privacy issues you get from using Windows 10, then Device Guard is a real security advantage and highly recommended. If you are concerned about privacy, Windows 10 is unfortunately out, which is a shame given this great feature. But we still don't know how secure Windows 10 really is. We know it has good security features, but that does not mean it doesn't have a lot of security vulnerabilities. We only see that through time. And through time, we can evaluate how secure the operating system has been. But it certainly has strong features that will help mitigate security threats. If you wanted to know how to configure and deploy Device Guard, then check out this deployment guide here. It is configured through servers and through group policies and such like. It is not really very deployable on a home network, especially as you're unlikely to have hardware that even supports it. If you're interested in the future of Microsoft's security strategy for Windows, or rather Windows 10, as that's the future, then there was a Black Hat talk, and these are the slides from that talk, so that's worth checking out. So that's Windows 10 Device Guard.